Each year, the sea level rises, setting off irreversible chain reactions beyond human control. Ten hottest years ever measured. Climate change is our single greatest security threat. You are failing us. Governments know it. Even the United States military knows it. None of this is rhetoric, and none of it is hysteria. It is fact. House of Fire. Welcome to the House on Fire podcast, powered by the Clio Institute. I'm your host, Dania Toledo, coming to you from ground zero of the climate crisis, Miami, Florida. And today we have a super special guest. We're talking with Anya Freeman, founder and CEO of Kind Designs, a climate technology company focused on building true living seawalls to enhance our coastal resilience. So hi, Anya. Welcome to House on Fire. It's great to have you here today. Um, how about we start with you telling us a little bit about who you are and what got you to start Kind Designs? Sure. Thanks for having me. I'm Anya. I'm the founder of Kind Designs. I was born in Ukraine. I grew up in Israel and I got this huge opportunity to come to America when I was already in high school because my dad got a job at the space program. And so we showed up to, the, to Maine, actually, in Bankport, Maine, a very small town. Nice. I didn't speak any English, but I was so excited about becoming American. And then like a good immigrant child, I eventually went to law school. And that's how I ended up in Miami, where Kind Designs is based today, because I got a scholarship to UM Law. Oh, nice. And I've never even like visited, but from the moment I arrived, I just fell in love with the city. Because I've li having lived many places, Miami finally felt like home. Because everyone here is from all over the world. There's so many languages and cultures just so vibrant and I was really happy to that I ended up here. That's beautiful. Yeah, it's a great city. And so I graduated, I did start working as a lawyer, uh, as a litigator, I had my own law firm, you know, and I had a nice life. I'm, you know, as, as one does in their 20s living in Miami. I had, I had a house with my girlfriends in South Beach. Nice. And then I started to notice year over year, our house was getting more and more flooded. Mm -hmm. And we all got a letter one year from the insurance company for our cars, letting us know that uh, flooding was no longer going to be covered. Oh. Like it was so common for your car to basically float down the street on our block that you couldn't even get insurance coverage for it. And so I just became very curious about this phenomenon of flooding, mm -hmm. which increased so much year over year since I moved here 15 years ago. Um, that started being curious about rising sea levels that are causing the flooding and the increase in storm surges. Mm -hmm. And what I saw is that there was a lot of attention on this problem, but the narrative is very gloom and doom. Mm -hmm. Basically, you have to be crazy to buy a house in Miami. We're all going to be underwater by 2060. There are a lot of haters out there for mm -hmm. our city, I think. And so I just thought like, that narrative and that conversation was really boring. Mm -hmm. And I was so surprised that nobody was looking at solutions and to specifically the application of technology to find solutions. Mm -hmm. And so not having any experience in construction at the time or any experience in tech at the time, I was just so passionate about finding a solution for my city and all coastal cities mm -hmm. facing this problem of rising sea levels and flooding that I was able to put together a team and together we came up with this idea of 3D printing living seawalls. So how would you say Kind Designs is an example of a business solution that is helping to mitigate climate change impacts? Sure, so let me tell you what living seawalls are. Mm -hmm. Well, first and foremost, the purpose of these living seawalls is to protect coastal cities like Miami from flooding. Mm -hmm. And forever, for says 120 years ago, the way our country has primarily addressed flooding and storm surges is building seawalls. Mm -hmm. And the first seawall in the United States went in the water in, uh, 120 years ago in Galveston, Texas. Okay. And it's almost exactly the same seawall that we're installing in Miami Beach today. Oh. There has literally never been any innovation. Mm -hmm. And the problem with these traditional seawalls, number one, is they're very expensive for communities. Mm -hmm. And that's because the construction method is very labor intensive and slow. Okay. And number two, traditional seawalls destroy marine habitats. Just in the U.S., we are on track to destroy 50,000 miles of marine habitats by 2050 by installing seawalls. That's like driving Miami to L.A. and back 17 times. Oh, that's awful. 
Yeah, it's because traditional seawalls leach chemicals mm -hmm. and also just because they're flat. So all the organisms and sea life that live by the coast can't attach to this new flat wall. Mm -hmm. So they migrate and no one is there to eat the toxins in the water and the quality of water goes down by 50% within a year okay. of installation. So that's been the problem with seawalls, the price and the economic um, imp uh, environmental impact. Mm -hmm. And so we thought, how can we come up with a seawall that's number one, more economic for mm -hmm. communities? And number two, also something that's nurturing for the underwater ecosystem. And so we came up with the idea of 3D printing the living seawalls. So the living seawalls are structurally identical to traditional seawalls. So they protect the coast from the flooding, the storm surges that mm -hmm. I mentioned. It's the same strength. It's the same installation method, the same um, dimensions. The difference is that A, by 3D printing them, we can produce it much more economically because mm -hmm. of the speed of our robot. And not very labor intensive as opposed to traditional. Exactly, building. it's okay. almost entirely autonomous. We only need one person to operate a robot. Mm -hmm. And our robot prints a 10 foot seawall, 10 by 10 foot seawall panel in less than an hour. That's incredible. It's crazy fast, it's a foot and a half per second. Mm -hmm. So every, every hour, every hour, sorry, in an hour, every hour, we can print these seawalls for an entire three shifts. Like so, in a day mm -hmm. we can produce twenty. One robot can produce twenty-four seawall panels. That's amazing. And we will now just triple our fleet. So we have three robots, so we can produce you know, over sixty panels per day. So that creates a lot of unlocks, a lot of exciting economics, mm -hmm. which we're able to then use to add the environmental impact component to this product. Mm -hmm. And the environmental impact component is that through the high resolution of our robot, high resolution 3D printing means the printing layer is very small. Okay. Ours is less than half an inch. And with that high resolution, we are able to incorporate design elements into the wet face of the seawall that were previously completely impossible with a mold, which is how mm -hmm. seawalls have always been made is with molds. Mm -hmm. And so with this high resolution, we can incorporate designs and we've used that to use biomimicry design principles and mimic local marine habitats. So in Florida, oh, awesome. it's mangroves, as you know. Yes. And so we scanned the roots of mangroves and then we incorporated that roots design to the seawall. So our seawall has the caves, like two, three foot long caves mm. where sea life can hide from predators. It has a very special texture, rigosity for small organisms and coral to, to attach. So we're able to transform a product that's structural into something that's also now functioning like an artificial reef. Mm -hmm. And it sequesters carbon and it collects data and it dissipates wave energy and there's no green premium, which is the key to this whole thing, is that all of these environmental benefits have no added cost. Our living seawalls are cheaper than traditional toxic concrete slabs. So considering the importance of having a living seawall in our coast to not only just help with flooding, but also help with like coastal resilience and all these other things that come in a package deal with it, do you have any plans so far to work with local organizations or other companies to rewild the coastlines in addition to implementing your living seawalls? Um, if not, what kind of collaboration would you hopefully like to see in the future? We're super open to collaborations. Our whole product really is a convergence of technologies like material science, 3D printing, um, uh, sensor tech, right? So mm -hmm. we're always looking to converge any other technologies or products into the seawall. Like seawalls may seem boring. I thought they were boring. Mm -hmm. That's actually why I chose them. The best businesses <laughs> where you make the most money are like toilet paper, like the most boring business says make the most money. But in fact, seawalls can be really exciting because you can add all of these amazing components to this, to this product. So an example is we're working with Ocean Rescue Alliance. Mm -hmm. It's a local, um, it's a local nonprofit and they're to implant, uh, to do coral implants onto the seawall. Oh, that's amazing. So I can accelerate the growth of all the organisms. That's awesome. And considering you said earlier, you got into this whole thing not having known anything about the tech space. Um, right now the, current, the term climate technology is everywhere right now. As a climate technology company, is Kind Designs a valid way to help 
build a resilient infrastructure in our community, um, especially when it comes to sea level rise. And I honestly want to just ask, how do you set yourself above the rest of other companies that are doing this, something similar as you? Because I, so far, I think you're miles away. Right. So we are the first and only company in the world mm -hmm. to 3D print seawalls. That's amazing. And our seawalls are already in the water. Mm -hmm. um, they, our first project was in Miami Beach in February. This um, year? Yeah, of this year. Awesome. So we're in the water, we're the first and only. I hope that eventually there will be other companies in this space. Mm -hmm. I know that local counties and a lot of coastal counties around the country are really trying to incentivize something they call living shorelines. Mm -hmm. So living seawalls is a big part of that puzzle, but they're looking for other solutions. So um, we don't want to be the only ones here forever, but we are really capitalizing on being first to market for mm -hmm. sure. And I think the reason we've been able to move so quickly is that we have a very strong economic vehicle that we're able to attach the environmental impact to. Mm -hmm. So the vehicle is seawalls. Well, with or without us, governments, property owners, buildings on the water, they all have to install seawalls. Mm -hmm. We're just giving them an option to do it more economically and to have all these environmental benefits. And it's just, a, it's just so, it's so similar, it's identical actually structurally and, inst and, and installation-wise, it's very easy to just plug our seawalls into existing projects, even if there's already um, a permit uh, that's been issued for those projects. So that, I think, is a reason we'll be able to move so quickly is this very strong economic vehicle. And I think we're proving out the economics, like succeeding, kind design succeeding then creates incentives for other startups, founders to innovate in this space mm -hmm. and for the city to focus more on this space, for investors to invest more in climate technology. So it's really, although we're extremely driven as a company, it's really about lifting up uh, all the in innovation of founders in our space and uh, definitely in our city. Of course. So there's so many coastal cities in the U.S. We are surrounded by so much water because we're a gigantic country and you started off in Maine um why did you launch kind designs in Miami and not maybe another major coastal city uh two reasons one it's my home mm -hmm. so I've been here for 15 years which I think is like in any other city it's like 150 years because <laughs> everyone here has been here for like 15 months but I've been here for a while it's the first place I have felt like has was my home mm -hmm. I'm really passionate about um Miami succeeding and really elevating as a place not to just spend money and have fun, but also a place we can build amazing businesses and innovate and create. So number one, it's my home. And the whole idea was born out, out of the desire to protect it from flooding and the storm surges that I mentioned. Number two, it also happens to be the number one seawall market, not just in the U.S., in the world. Oh, so the U.S. Army Corps of Engineers releases the data of how much they're budgeting to spend on infra coastal infrastructure, and they break it down by states and by cities. Mm -hmm. When you look at the top 10 cities, five are in Florida. Okay. And number one by far is okay. Miami. Number two is New York City, and their spend on seawalls is half of that of Miami. Interesting. Yeah. So Miami, Florida is an amazing place to be. Miami is the best, is even better as a city. And because there's so much um, money being spent on these seawalls, there's also a lot of attention on it by the media, by the government. So it's really like right place and right time mm -hmm. to innovate seawalls. Definitely. And so you mentioned that um, traditional seawalls are more labor intensive so they're more expensive so really a big push for kind designs is how economical it is to um the city why is it that um what's stopping developers from using kind designs as opposed to traditional flat cement walls considering that it seems to be cheaper nothing nothing yeah <laughs> oh, they awesome. just don't know about us yet the, and that's, the, and that's the only problem. <laughs> the vision is for us to be able to produce seawalls for all of the contractors. Amazing. The only um, exception is if you have very deep water, like over 20 feet, like mm -hmm. in the Port of Miami, for example, they have to use steel. Mm. Or there's a crazy boat traffic and wave action, again, like the port. Mm -hmm. It's steel. But any 
any time a contractor is already planning to use a concrete seawall, which is the majority of projects in the United States, mm -hmm. then kind designs, living seawalls can absolutely be substituted for that. Okay, that's awesome. So hopefully we get some developers in here that happen to catch this episode. This is your girl. This is Anya. Happy to introduce you to her. Thank you for the shout out. <laughs> <laughs> you also mentioned earlier, traditional seawalls are made out of concrete. What exact material are your seawalls made out of? And why is it that that material is better for this purpose than, say, the traditional cement used in other projects? Sure. So we use non, um, non-toxic, mm -hmm. extrudable concrete. So the extrudable part means that it can go. It has aggregates um, that are small enough for the mix to be able to go through a nozzle when we're printing. You can't mm -hmm. put regular concrete through a 3D printer or a robot because mm -hmm. it will clog the the the, 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 the little nozzle. Like exactly the nozzle. Okay. So our aggregate size aggregates are like little rocks that are added to the concrete mix to strengthen it. So ours are three eighth of an inch. So very small aggregates which makes it the mix extrudable. Mm -hmm. Number two, it cures extremely fast. So our whole, like when we print a 10 foot by 10 foot panel, the whole panel is cured in a day. Traditional concrete, it takes three to four weeks for it to cure. Mm -hmm. So again, that adds to our speed and being able to print our panels to order basically. Mm -hmm. Now the non-toxic part, what makes our concrete non-toxic is that it has no chlorides and it has no metals. Mm -hmm. so therefore, it does not leach once the seawall is installed. Okay. It also makes it a 30% lower temperature than traditional concrete. So our carbon footprint is then 30% lower than traditional mix. That's awesome. So a lot of small things that add up to something that's actually very different. So you said earlier that by 2040, 50,000 miles of marine habitats will be contaminated due to traditional seawalls. You kind of already got into this, but I wanted to ask anyway, how do your 3D printed um, seawalls help mitigate this um, marine contamination? So not only do our seawalls not destroy marine habitats, they are habitats. So we're on a mission to replace every single foot of toxic seawalls with artificial reefs. Mm -hmm. So it's really a massive difference. Instead of installing seawalls, we're now able to install artificial reefs that also function like seawalls. Sea exactly. Mm -hmm. That's awesome. And you've already said some of Kind Design seawalls are already in the water. How many of these seawalls have been implemented so far and how many are in process actively? Sure. So again, we're, we've are we been moving very quickly. So we've only been, um, we launched about eight months ago. Like eight months ago, we literally had a bucket to sit on, <laughs> plas plastic Home Depot buckets. So it was like our seats and our table. You got to start somewhere. Exactly. We have awesome photos. To all I was like, we have to <laughs> always remember this moment. And then like my COO would like reverse his truck into the warehouse. Mm -hmm. And that would be our desk, like the, like the back the of back his of truck, truck and us sitting on buckets typing away. So that was literally eight months ago. So a lot has happened since we raised our seed round, five and a half million. We're now a team of 14. We moved to a warehouse on the Miami River, 50,000 square foot warehouse. So we can move the seawalls by barge mm -hmm. and we tripled the robot fleet. And most importantly, we installed the first seawall. So the first installation was in February. That was a house on Miami Beach on Pine Tree Drive, mm -hmm. about a hundred linear feet. And we're now in the process of printing three more projects uh, ranging from also 100 feet to one more we're doing that's 1,500 linear feet. So that's 150 of our seawall panels. And that's for a big um, building uh, development in Miami. Awesome. Um, wow, you really did move so fast. That touched ground what, in February, you said? So That first like, project was February, exactly. It's been like just over a month. Yeah, That's exactly. amazing. Thank Congratulations. You. So... You've really built this company and have it moving forward so fast. What hopes do you have for the future of Kind Designs regarding coastal resilience, sustainability, and sustainable infrastructure moving forward? So there's 507 cities globally at risk from rising sea levels, from flooding, from storm surges. And in many, many of those communities, traditional seawalls are just cost prohibitive. Mm -hmm. so not only are they bad for the environment, they're just cost prohibitive. And they're already making plans to abandon their homes and move inland. Mm -hmm. 
So at Kind Designs, we are hyper-focused on mass-producing these living seawalls in Florida, democratizing the product, even in the technology, even more, and then scaling to all 507 cities that are at risk, not by building warehouse by warehouse, there's no time for that, mm -hmm. but we will scale through a licensing model. Mm -hmm. So we'll provide financing for construction companies to be able to buy their own robotic arm from us, give them a local material provider, a library of designs that's customized to the marine habitats that's lo local there, mm -hmm. and then technical support. And they'll be the ones who are printing the seawalls in their communities. That's amazing, that's so cool. Um, I, you've mentioned now a few times that traditional seawalls are cost prohibitive, and I don't know if I've asked this question, but do you know off the top of your head, and it's okay if you don't, um, by how much, like how much cheaper are kind designs models versus traditional seawalls? Yeah, I definitely know. This is like what I talk about all day, every day. So <laughs> um, right now, well, first of all, what, what, how much do seawalls cost? Why are they cost prohibitive? As using Miami as an example, because I'm just familiar with this market the most. A small house in the water has about a hundred foot seawall. Um, that seawall will cost the homeowner two hundred to three hundred thousand hmm. dollars. And a lot of people they don't live in a mansion on the water, right? They maybe inherited a home from their their family, and it was bought at a time like before the prices skyrocketed in in, mm -hmm. in our city and our and our state, and everyone started moving here. And so for them, that's an astronomical number and they often can't afford it and they have to move and, mm -hmm. you know, and they lose their homes because of it. And seawalls are mandated. Like even if you have a healthy seawall, counties keep increasing the height of the seawalls. Mm -hmm. So the main beach just increased there to five feet, nine inches. So if you have a healthy seawall, you now have to build a new seawall to meet those requirements. Mm -hmm. So people are getting a seawall because they have to or because they're getting flooded and they just can't avoid this cost. So we really, really are passionate about making seawalls more affordable and having the environmental impact as a huge bonus. Mm -hmm. So when it comes to panel costs, we don't do the installation, right? We mm -hmm. are just a vendor. All we do all day, every day is 3D printing seawall panels. Mm -hmm. We sell them to construction companies and they do the installation but the panels themselves for now are 20% lower cost than traditional toxic concrete slabs. That is a significant number, especially considering 200 to 300,000 for a seawall. That does take off a significant chunk. Um, and so to kind of close out here, again, congratulations on Kind Designs and how fast you've been moving. What does the future hold for Kind Designs as a business that is helping to build more, a more resilient infrastructure for our community and then hopefully soon other communities like us? Sure, so as a business, the economic goals for the company, number one, first female unicorn in Miami. They've never had one and it's particularly, I think it will be impactful for the city to have a uni unicorn that's in climate technology. Mm -hmm. And it's not that just I personally wanna be the first female unicorn, but one, it's like, you know, the, um, no one ever beat a two hour, two hour time for a marathon. Mm -hmm. For like forever and ever and ever, no one ever achieved running it under two hours. And then mm -hmm. once one man ran it like one hour, 59 minutes, 59 seconds, I don't remember the exact time, after that, like 10 more people ran a time below two hours in the next year. Mm -hmm. So I just want to be able to be the first only so women start believing that they can also have a unicorn company. Investors start believing in women and in founders in our city and start investing more in this, in, um, in this ecosystem that we're building now. And we enable more companies in the climate technology space to also go for it, but to really do it in a way that's really focused on this economic vehicle that I keep talking about. Mm -hmm. Focused on companies and ideas that can be scaled, not just nationally, but globally through amazing economics and then have all the environmental benefits almost as a bonus to make it a non, like a no brainer for communities and for people to adopt their climate solutions. Awesome. And then last thing I want to ask you, this is as you, Anya, personally regarding climate, anything that is there anything you want to share with our viewers or listeners about any hope that you have regarding our future in terms of climate adaptation? I hope that by proving, not I hope, we, <laughs> we plan mm -hmm. that by proving that we can produce and install 
seawalls mm -hmm. that are beautiful, that function like reefs, that sequester carbon, that collect data, that can last 50 more years in a regular seawall, then the whole category of living seawalls becomes mandated in our communities. Because not only are we doing with all the environmental benefits, but we can also do cheaper. So there's no reason to ever install another traditional toxic seawall again. Amazing. Thank you so much for your time and for being on House on Fire today. Thank you so much. House on Fire is powered by the Clio Institute and could not be made possible without the support of the Lynn and Lewis Wolfson II Family Foundation. This episode is hosted by me, Dani Toledo, and is produced by Unicorn Fire Studios. The intro music is composed by the Microscopic Orchestra. If you're digging what we do here at House on Fire, be sure to leave us a five-star review on your favorite podcast platform. It really helps us a lot. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit that little notification bell so that you know when we drop a new episode. And until next time, guys, stay safe and enjoy our coasts while we still can. <laughs>